Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Shan Rasul, and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. A day after UN court asked India to allow Italian Marine Salvatore Girone to return home, Union Minister Arun Jaitley tells the Lok Sabha that the government still holds jurisdiction over the case. CBI questions former IAF Chief S.P. Thyagi for the second day on the Augusta Westland chopper deal. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi brushes off BJP's attempts to drag him into the case. House committee pulls up the central government on the January 2nd Pathan Court terror attack. Says picture would have been different if the intelligence agencies had functioned properly. Supreme Court tells Centre to consider a floor test in Uttarakhand under its supervision. Postpones hearing on the case till tomorrow. And campaigning for the sixth and last phase of the Assembly elections in West Bengal ends. 25 Assembly seats including 16 in Purba Bidnipur and 9 in Kuch Bihar districts go to the polls on Thursday. A top story this evening, at the Standing Committee of the Ministry of Home Affairs today pulled up the centre for the January 2nd Patanko terror attack. The panel claimed that the centre had been serious and uh, they had the centre been serious and the intelligence agencies functioned properly, the picture would have been very different. Were security agencies taken by surprise by attackers at the Pathankot airbase? The Standing Committee of Ministry of Home Affairs seems to think so. Panel Chairman Pradeep Bhattacharya said the agencies were ill-prepared to anticipate or counter the threat swiftly. ये बहुत बड़ी बात जरूरी है कि हम इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसीज़ को हम प्रिपेयर्ड स्टेट में रखें और देश की नेशनल सिक्योरिटी में ये बहुत बड़ी कदम होते हैं। Standing panel members said they had a long interaction with officers at the base. According to them, the information came on the morning after the attack, and that too not from Punjab but from the Delhi Air Force. सांसदों की संसदीय समिति की अनुसंसाएं गंभीर हैं और भारत सरकार को इससे सबक लेना चाहिए उनके द्वारा की गई आलोचना शर्मनाक है The government said it will take the report seriously and take appropriate steps panel members claimed there are very unsafe conditions at the Pathan Court air base serious note of the parliamentary standing committee's recommendations and we will ensure that all those concerns are being addressed properly the committee said it was unable to understand how the terrorists reached the Pathan Court Air Base despite terror alerts being sounded well in advance. The fact was that the fact 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 that India has said the Pathan Ghot Air Base was attacked by heavily armed Jaish e Mohammed terrorists. Four terrorists and three security forces personnel were killed in the operation. A five member Pakistani joint investigation team visited India in March to collect physical evidences. But so far, Pakistan has not agreed to allow a reciprocal visit by India to probe the attack. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Abed Ansari has not accepted the resignation of Vijay Malia. Secretary General of Rajya Sabha Shamshir Sharif has written to Malia that his resignation letter did not conform to a prescribed procedure and did not bear the signature in the original. According to Rule 213 of the procedures, resignations of members should be voluntary and genuine. Earlier, the Ethics Committee of the Rajya Sabha discussed the matters relating to Vijay Malia. Committee Chairman Karan Singh confirmed that the members had reached a unanimous decision. He further added that the Rajya Sabha will be informed of the decision tomorrow. We met today the Ethics Committee as scheduled. Uh, it would not be appropriate for me to reveal what transpired in the committee because that is supposed to be confidential until it is uh, placed before the House. But I can say this much, that we did take a decision unanimously and tomorrow I am hopeful that I will be able to present the report to the House along with the uh, resolution. 
Now, the CBI today questioned former IAF chief S.P. Tyagi for the second day in a row with connection with the controversial 3600 crore Augusta Western Chopper deal. The agency has filed a case against Tyagi along with 13 others, including his cousins and some European middlemen. This comes after, after the Milan Court of Appeals in Italy concluded that bribes were paid to clink the deal. Another round of questioning in the 3,600 crore Augusta Westland chopper scam. For the second day, former Indian Air Force Chief S.P. Tyagi answered the CBI's queries on his alleged links with middlemen, his trips to Italy and the reasons behind changing specifications. जो गलत होगा वो गलत होगा देखिए मैं ना तो किसी का नाम लूंगा निष्पक्ष छानबीन होनी चाहिए जो गलत हैं उनको सजा मिलनी चाहिए द रूलिंग बीजेपी मीनवाइल कंटिन्यूड इट्स अटेम्प्ट्स टू ड्रैग द गांधीज इनटू द डील पार्टी एमपी किरीट सोमैया रिपोर्टेडली रोड टू द एनफोर्समेंट डायरेक्टोरेट एंड द सीबीआई आस्किंग देम टू चेक राहुल गांधीज लिंक ऑफ अ पॉलिटिकल एड विद द मिडलमैन गुइदो हाशके इन द डील उनकी मंशा यही है कि किसी हालत में गांधी फैमिली को कांग्रेस पार्टी को डिफेम करना लेकिन गांधी फैमिली को कोई खत्म नहीं कर सकता और ऐसे कितने भी बीजेपी के नेता लोग बात करने दो कुछ होने वाला नहीं है लोग समझदार हैं गवर्नमेंट इज आल्सो कीन बिकॉज इस मैटर कंसर्निंग दी सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री सेकेंडरी कंसर्निंग a dirty scam that has taken place during the earlier regime and also no action was taken by the earlier regime. A lot of things are coming out and even the judge yesterday has also come out. He has also made certain observations. All these things need to be discussed in parliament and the government is willing to do it. After the Milan Court of Appeals in Italy concluded that bribes were paid to clinch the deal, the CBI filed a case against Tiagi along with 13 others including his cousins and European middlemen. The former air chief is alleged to have reduced flying ceiling of the helicopter from 6,000 meters to 4,500 meters to make Augusta Westland helicopters eligible for the deal. Tiagi has denied all the allegations against him. The agency had already questioned Tiagi in 2013, but this session is the first after the Italian court order. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, the government today informed Parliament that India holds jurisdiction over Italian Marine Salvatore Gironi. The clarification came a day after the UN Permanent Court of Arbitration asked India to allow the Marine to go back home pending a case over jurisdiction issues. Union Minister Arun Jaitley told Lok Sabha that the tribunal had confirmed Italy's obligation to return Girona to India after its jurisdiction is established. India will vigorously pursue the Italian Marines case before the UN Arbitration Court to ensure justice for victims. Information and Broadcasting Minister Arun Jaitley told Parliament on Tuesday, a day after a UN arbitration court asked New Delhi to release the Marines. Making a statement in Lok Sabha on behalf of External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj, Jaitley asserted that the issue of jurisdiction, which is at the heart of the case, is yet to be argued before the tribunal. He further clarified that even if the detained Italian Marine returns home, as per the UN tribunal's orders, he would remain under the Supreme Court of India's jurisdiction. We strongly believe that India has jurisdiction in this case, and this position has been and will be our unwavering stance. As a nation that respects international law, we will pursue our case vigorously before the arbitral tribunal. The government will fight for the rights of the victims of this incident and are confident in obtaining justice for them and their families. Jaitley also informed members that the UN tribunal has left it to the Supreme Court to fix precise conditions of the Italian Marines' bail. The government will now approach the top court for direction. The government will approach the Supreme, Honourable Supreme Court for its direction in the matter. We see the tribunal's order not just as a recognition of India's consistent position and the key arguments, but also as an affirmation of the authority of the Indian Supreme Court. Jaitley's response, however, failed to pacify opposition members who criticized the government for its handling of the case. Congress members, including Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, staged a walkout, alleging that the release of the Marine was a fixed match. Modi ji, when we met 
इटालियन प्रधानमंत्री से तो उन्होंने कहा था कि कोई झूठ से ही साक्ष्य गांधी परिवार के खिलाफ दीजिए तो हम आपके जो हमारे दो भारतीय मछुआरों की हत्या हुई थी उसका जो आरोपी है इटालियन दो मैरिन उसको छोड़ देंगे तो अगर इस तरह की बातें हुई हैं अगर तो ये बहुत ही चिंता का विषय है देश के लोगों के सोचने का है कि सरकार की सस्ता तक गिर सकती है The two Italian Marines were arrested in February 2012 off the coast of Kerala for allegedly shooting down two fishermen reportedly mistaking them for pirates. While one of them is already back home on health grounds, Italy has been seeking the return of the other marine as well. The case has triggered a diplomatic row between India and Italy. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side of the state unit. How would you really tell the people that you are different from AIEDMK? We have delivered. It's there for people to see. When you defend DMK so vociferously, the same party which you left, doesn't that put you in a very awkward situation? Nowhere I have spoken a word against Stalin. Nowhere Stalin has spoken a word against me. When you go down on the ground and talk to the common people, the only word on their lips is "amma" and her welfare schemes. You know, you turn right, you turn left, you look up, you look down, you see only "amma, amma, amma." Watch to the point with Congress spokesperson and Tamil film actress Kushbu only on Rajya Sabha Television. Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young, and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue, symbolized by the ladders, rewarded, while the vices shown by the snakes are punished. Each square, in turn, also narrates a message of wisdom. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, the Delhi government has moved the Supreme Court seeking a phased implementation of the ban on diesel taxis. The government's move came on a day when protesting taxi drivers created massive traffic jams at various places in Delhi, creating a nightmare for the commuters. For the second day in a row, massive traffic jams on Delhi's roads, vehicles crawled while commuters remained stuck in the heat. Thousands of diesel taxi drivers and their owners kept up their protest against the Supreme Court's ban on diesel taxis in the NCR region. Look, we don't want to be concerned with anyone. But when the driver comes to the rosy road, when it comes to someone's face, then it will obviously do such a thing. After the huge outcry, the Delhi government moved the Supreme Court on Tuesday, seeking time to phase out diesel taxis. The Apex Court told the government to submit a detailed plan. The centre also urged the Apex Court to reconsider the ban. Yesterday, uh, our meeting was with Nitin Gadkari Ji, Geethe and me, because we have three mantras in the Supreme Court, in that case, we have given the FDA. तो डीजल टैक्सी को अचानक बंद करने से तो केवल हालात बिगड़ती है सुधरती नहीं है Nearly 30,000 vehicles were forced to go off the roads after the Supreme Court banned diesel run taxis from the 1st of May. The ban comes in the wake of pollution control measures in the city that saw two phases of the odd even scheme and a ban on the registration of any new diesel cars above the capacity of 2000 cc. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. 
Now, continuing its hearing on the Uttarakhand political crisis, the Supreme Court today asked the Centre to explore the feasibility of holding a floor test in the State Assembly under the Court's supervision. During the brief hearing, the bench asked the Attorney General to take instruction and apprise it about the feasibility of holding the floor test. The Court also gave the Centre one day to respond as it adjourned the hearing till tomorrow. The Apex Court was hearing the Centre's appeal against the Uttarakhand High Court verdict, revoking President's rule in the state. The Centre introduced President's rule on the 27th of March, one day before Chief Minister Harish Rawat was to take a trust vote in the Assembly. The Uttarakhand High Court pulled up the Centre for its action and revoked the President's rule before Supreme Court stayed its order and ordered status quo. Because we are in the middle of the state, Modi government will be opened by the fear of इसलिए फ्लोर टेस्ट टाल रही है अब सवाल यह है कि फ्लोर टेस्ट में उन विधायकों का क्या होगा जिनकी सदस्यता माननीय स्पीकर साहब ने निरस्त कर दी है जो भी होगा ठीक ही होगा सुप्रीम कोर्ट कोई बात कहती है तो सोच समझ के कहती है तो उनका जो निर्णय आएगा वो सिरोधारी होगा Now, with his government about to complete two years in office, Prime Minister Modi has asked all BJP MPs to highlight the major achievements of the government before the people. The BJP Parliamentary Party held a meeting today. In the course of the meeting, Prime Minister listed out multiple schemes of the government like the Mudra scheme, the Jandhan Yojana, increased LPG coverage and electrification of villages. He has also directed party MPs to talk about these before the people. The Prime Minister said it was important for people to believe that the government has fulfilled the commitments it has made to them. The issue of the VVIP chopper scam over which the BJP's targeted Congress chief Sonia Gandhi was also taken up at the parliamentary party meet. Now, campaigning for the sixth and final phase of the West Bengal Assembly polls came to an end a short while ago. 25 Assembly constituencies from Kuch Bihar and East Midnapur will go to the polls on the 5th of May. Over 81% electorate had exercised their franchise in the fifth phase of elections. At least 15 crore parties are in the fray for the sixth phase, while 33 candidates have declared criminal cases against themselves. Counting of votes will be held on the 19th of May. Let's now shift focus to the drought and the severe water crisis across the country. Now, the Bhima River has all but vanished in Karnataka's Gulbarga district, and people in the region are struggling hard to get water for their daily needs in the middle of a harsh summer. Take a look at this special report. Wells and taps in Marathwada have gone completely dry. Even the local river seems to have given up its struggle in the face of one of the worst droughts in the region. जो परिस्थिति है तो ये इतनी खतरनाक परिस्थिति दिखाई देती है कि लोग ये नदी के अंदर से झीरा बनाकर और एक-एक एक एक गिलास जो एक आदमी के लिए कम से कम दस गिलास पानी की जरूरत होती है वो दिन भर में एक हंडे में एक 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 गिलास करके दो दो घंटे तीन तीन घंटे में एक हंडा भरता the scene is no different in Karnataka's Gulbarga region. The local Bhima River, once the main source of water, has all but vanished. People are struggling hard to collect water. The authorities have arranged water tankers, but these have not been enough. There is, of course, a little, the very fact that we are doing tanker supply at a, such a large scale shows that there is a, a situation of uh, water deficit, groundwater deficit. With temperatures in May and June tipped to register temperatures of over 40 degrees Celsius, water is likely to get scarcer. Adding to the problem are the two straight years of drought, the fourth time in over a century. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a short break. That's lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. Arisen from a multi hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television.
Life after death was a cardinal belief in the Harappan civilization. Reflecting this is the skeleton of a middle-aged woman with gold bangles. Excavated from Rakhigari in Haryana, it's an example of the burial practices in those times. Much like the Egyptian mummies, vessels, eatables, ornaments were kept near the dead body in the hope that they would be of use to the person in the next world. How would you really tell the people that you are different from AIEDMK? We have delivered. It's there for people to see. When you defend DMK so vociferously, the same party which you left, doesn't that put you in a very awkward situation? Nowhere I have spoken a word against Stalin. Nowhere Stalin has spoken a word against me. When you go down on the ground and talk to the common people, the only word on their lips is Amma and her welfare schemes. You know, you turn right, you turn left, you look up, you look down, you see only Amma, Amma, Amma. Watch to the point with Congress spokesperson and Tamil film actress Kushbu only on Rajya Sabha television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Uh, some international news now. And uh, Pakistan's efforts to get eight F-16 fighter jets from the U.S. hit a fresh snag today after the U.S. State Department expressed its inability to fund the $700 million deal. The U.S. asked Pakistan to put forward its national funds to buy F-16s after some of its top senators put a hold on the use of uh, American taxpayers' money to partially finance them. U.S. State Department spokesperson uh, John Kirby said, we have informed Pakistan about the congressional objection and now they should put forward national funds for the deal, unquote. Last week, American lawmakers during a congressional hearing openly told the Obama administration that they feared Pakistan would use these F-16 fighter jets against India and not against terrorists. Now, Pakistan has time till May end to avail the American offer to procure the F-16s. Any delay in the acceptance of the offer would result in an increase of the cost of the fighter jets. Now, the European Commission will give conditional approval for Turks to travel without visas to Europe's passport-free Schengen area. The move is part of a deal in which Turkey is taking back migrants who crossed over the Aegean Sea to Greece. The European Union representatives visited a temporary centre that housed 4,800 Syrians to check that uh, Ankara was adhering to its part of the agreement. The EU agreed to pay 6 billion euros to Turkey with political rewards as well as part of the deal. But Turkey must still meet the EU's criteria and the deal must be approved by the European Parliament and member states. The EU fears that without a visa deal, Turkey will not control migration. Some international news now and global buzz. Kenyan rescuers pulled out an 18-month-old young child alive from the rubble of a six-story building on Tuesday. The girl was found in a bucket wrapped in a blanket. The six-story residence came down in heavy rain four days ago, killing at least 22 people in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond said he was deeply concerned about the state of the ceasefire in Syria and that a new initiative was needed to keep the dialogue alive after a sharp escalation of violence in the city of Aleppo in Syria. The United States and Russia have also reported that they are working on extending the ceasefire at Aleppo. The Spanish police today arrested four people in Madrid suspected of spreading pro-jihadi propaganda and recruiting followers. Civil Guard police on Tuesday arrested two Moroccans in the town of Pinto and a Moroccan and a Spaniard in Siempolues, uh, south of the Spanish capital. The police said uh, that uh, the four pa uh, form part of an organized group that worked intensely to spread extremist material on the internet. Australia's central bank lowered the cash rate by 25 basis points to a record low of 1.75% on Tuesday. It was the first easing in, year, in the year as it seeks to restrain a rising currency and insulate the economy from creeping deflation. The Australian dollar fell more than one cent following the decision. The Australian economy is still continuing to rebalance following the mining investment boom. Time now to take a look at what else has been happening in the world of sports and sports beat. Cricket legend Sachin Tendulkar today accepted the Indian Olympic Association's invitation to become the country's goodwill ambassador for the upcoming Rio Olympics. 
Tendulkar is the third goodwill ambassador in IOA after Bollywood star Salman Khan and is shooter Abhinav Bindra. The Indian Cricket Board has recommended Test Captain Virat Kohli for the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna, the country's highest sporting honour, and Ajinkya Rahane for the Arjuna Award this year. The prestigious Khel Ratna Award carries a cash prize of 7.5 lakh rupees in addition to a citation, while the Arjuna Awardee receives a cash prize of 5 lakh rupees and a citation. In what is considered a footballing miracle, Leicester City won the English Premier League title on Monday as their only remaining challengers, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, drew 2-2 at Chelsea to complete one of the greatest ever sporting achievements. It is the team's first title in its 132-year-old history. The family of a five-year-old Afghan boy who received autographed shirts from his soccer hero Lionel Messi was forced to leave Afghanistan. The five-year-old son of Mohammad Arif Ahmadi was in the headlines when he was photographed wearing a homemade Argentinian t-shirt, number 10, on the back written uh, and that they have now said uh, that they've moved to Pakistan and settled in the city of Quetta, hoping for a better life. American Brian Stewart won his first PGA Tour title with a victory in a three-way playoff and the weather curtails your classic of New Orleans. Stewart was level at 15 under with compatriot Jamie Lovemark and South Korean and Byung Hoon after 54 holes. He won at the second extra hole, the par 5 18th, after a superb first shot to three feet led to a birdie. Now, President Pranam Mukherjee gave away the 63rd National Film Awards in New Delhi today. Those honoured include Amitabh Bachchan, who got the Best Actor Award for Piku, and Kangana Ranaut, who was judged Best Actress for her double role in Tanu Wedgman Returns. Sanjay Leela Bhansali backed the award for Best Director for his period drama, Baji Rao Mastani. The Best Special Effects and the Best Film Award went to the war film, Bahubali. Veteran actor Manoj Kumar, who has essayed many a patriotic role in films, was, uh, was honoured with the Data Sahib Falke Award. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.